So yeah, uh, just to, you know, it says in the Zoom thing, my name is Josh Finton and I'm here with Reagan. She's a former missionary who's served with BSI for five years and she's now a board member and she's super awesome. So yeah, it's great to be with you, Lauren, and for future people who might watch this recording, um, thanks for listening in. To give you a quick overview of how I want to spend the next 20 minutes or so, um, I want to share a little bit about the story of village schools and uh, my own personal story and how that's kind of interwoven. Um, and then I want to show, share a quick video and then kind of open the floor for Reagan to share with her experience and her time being overseas in Tanzania and Zambia. Um, and then if time permits, we can have some questions. So yes, um, the story of village schools, in my opinion, and I am biased, I think it's a great story. And I think with any great story, there's a number of different perspectives that you can share from. And I think the most compelling way to share about the story of village schools is through um, the lens of Godfrey and Ima. Um, they are two uh, Tanzanian men. Um, I count them as my brothers. Um, we lived under the same roof a number of years and I feel very blessed to have spent that time with them and to know them in the capacity that I know them. They're both men of incredible faith and um, they have wonderful families and their lives are examples of a race well run um, and so I count it a great privilege to work alongside them in the capacity that I am right now and just to have them as an inspiration and a model to me. Um, so Godfrey and Ima, their stories are very similar to, or they start in a very similar place to that of so many in villages in Tanzania and indeed across Africa. Um, Godfrey was born in the Rukwa Valley of Tanzania. It's, uh, it's down near the Zambian border. And um, Emanuele was born sort of on the mountaintop outside of the Rukwa Valley, and they lived about 50 miles from each other. Their stories are very similar to everybody else in Tanzania in that when they finished primary school, uh, when they finished the seventh grade, and when the results came back from the government, their names weren't on the list of people who were chosen to go to. It wasn't that they'd failed, they both passed and they both done well on their exams. It was simply that there was no room for them to go to high school. Um, and their parents being from, you know, Godfrey's father had passed away years before and Emus came from a very poor family. Neither of them had the resources to be able to go to a private school. And so for all practical purposes, Godfrey and Emanuele were going to spend the rest of their lives Sort of eking out a life with subsistence farmers, and they were going to live a life of extreme. A um, few years after they'd been out of primary school, they heard of a secondary school that had been built um, about 10 miles from where Emanuele was living and about 50 miles from where Godfrey was living. This community had come together and they built Makuzani Secondary School. So they both went to see if maybe there was room for them to go to high school, and there was. And so after four years against all of the statistics and the odds, Godfrey and Ima graduated from high school. And at the end of those four years, they were given a charge. You've been blessed with this opportunity to, to be a blessing to others. What are you going to do with this opportunity? And, and so Godfrey and Ima, this, uh, they started to dream, and they started to dream really big. And they had a dream that one day every kid in every village in Tanzania would have the same chance that they got, the chance to go to high school. And, um, and so fundamentally, with their dream, it wasn't a question of starting a, starting a high school in Godfrey's village or starting a school in Ima's village. It was something much bigger than that. It was about starting dozens of schools, maybe one day hundreds of schools. It wasn't about helping a few hundred kids get the chance that they got, it was about helping thousands of kids tens of thousands of kids, maybe one day hundreds of thousands of kids. It's about effecting a systemic change that will write this injustice that says that every year millions of kids across sub-Saharan Africa are going to a life of extreme poverty simply for lack of a better lack of access to education. Um, and so with that dream in mind, uh, Godfrey 
and Ima heard of this village about 300 miles away, um, the village of Igoda, that was interested in building a high school. And so they traveled the 300 miles on really terrible roads, and, um, and they wound up about 30 miles away in the village of Lugoda, which is where the government clinic is. And, um, and they realized that they weren't in the right place because Igo nobody knew where Igoda was. And so they had to wander around trying to find its village, and finally somebody knew where they were. Took them about 10 miles to from where Igoda, 10 miles to where Igoda was, and then they had to walk the last 10 miles. And they didn't know anybody in Igoda personally. Um, they didn't know where they were going to spend the night when they walked into Igoda that first evening, much less what they were going to have for dinner. Um, they just felt a calling from God um, that this was what they were doing. And so Godfrey and Ima spent a few months there in Igoda and they shared their stories with these people and how they had had the chance to go to high school at Makladani and they had seen this community do all of this work and so they promised the community that if you guys do the same work if you make the bricks if you carry the stones if you provide the sand and the water for the construction um you guys will get us and somehow these people had faith in these two high school graduates who were in their mid-20s you know godfrey and Hemo were not they didn't have phds in community development um or you know economics and stuff like that they were just a couple of high school kids with them, high school graduates with them. And so the community there and you go to listen to them and they came together and in 70 days, they built and opened Madisi Secondary School. And if all had gone according to plan, um, they would have just built Madisi that first year and then maybe the second year they might've opened a second school and gone on one school at a time each year. Something incredible happened. When the school opened, people came, people heard about it. Um, the same way that Godfrey had heard about Makuzani, people heard about it and they came to see, you know, is there room for our kids to go to this school? And inevitably the question comes, how on God's good green earth did this school appear in this little village of Igoda? Like, where did it come from? And, and the community said, well, we did all of this work and we built the school. And so when everybody went home to their home villages, the conversations that they were having amongst themselves wasn't whether they could send their kids to a DC, it was whether or not they could build their own school. And so in the village of Sawala, about 20, 20 kilometers away, they were having that conversation. They built the second school um, that same year in 2005. And the government official who came and registered my DC, when he saw that it happened, he pulled Godfrey aside and said, um, would you be willing to come and work with my the people in my village of Kisina? Um, they're ready to work and will do this as well. So instead of building and opening one school, they opened three schools. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And today there's 39 schools open in Tanzania. Um, there's over 10,000 students in Tanzania. But what's truly incredible is that not only has it spread all over Tanzania, it's also spread into different countries. There are people in Malawi who have heard of the work that's happening and they've come together and they've started to build schools. And the same is happening in Zambia and right now in Uganda as well, they might start building their first school. Um, and so all total, there's 51 schools that are open. There's almost 14,000 kids in school and they're working on another nine schools. So it's really exciting everything that is happening um, with village schools. My own story, um, I got to grow up watching this happen. So when Godfrey and Ima decided in 2004 that they wanted to found village schools, my parents uh, prayed about it and decided that they wanted to work alongside them. And so I was unwillingly in tow with my parents along with my brother. And so we all moved to, um, to the village of Igoda and we lived there. Um, and I got to watch village schools start out as the one school with 180 kids um, and get to transform into what it is today. And getting to see all of that has tremendously impacted my life. Um, I know it's really difficult to wrap your head, wrap sort of what it, this actually looks like. So I wanna show you, um, hopefully, and I'm not very Zoom savvy, so. I apologize.
Okay, I think this is, yes, here we go. So this is where I grew up. Um, as you can see, I, it's basically paradise. Um, and it, it's incredibly lush, and I think I had the best childhood in the world. Um, I grew up, you know, the saying says, it takes a village to raise a kid. Uh, that definitely, I resonate with that very much so. Um, the reason I want to show you this particular footage is this is, this up here is the village of Ikanigombe. It's one of the five villages that came together alongside Igoda um, to build Madisi Secondary School. And so uh, every day for, uh, for, you know, for several months, people would walk along this road here um, to the school and they would make bricks and they would carry water up the hill and they would quarry stones and they would make this all happen. And it's a tremendous amount of work. Um, and so now, you know, this is 15 years later, you can see the school that they have built here. Um, it is truly extraordinary what they have done. Um, down here, this is the creek that they would, they would carry the water all the way up the hill. It's like a mile. I um, mean, they carry it in five gallon uh, buckets on their heads. And the stones they would quarry out of the side, you know, out of this hole in the ground and the brick would make them all and then they would carry them up the hill. It's a tremendous amount of work. But the end result, as you can see, is this huge school. Right now there's over 700 students who are studying at Medici. Um, and it is just incredible. I was very fortunate. I got to spend uh, about three years teaching at Medici. I taught math because I'm a nerd and I like math. And um, this is, you can start to see here, this is my house where I grew up and live with God for Lima. And every morning I'd walk up this hill um, and come and teach in these classrooms here. And I still remember the first morning walking up and thinking, oh dear God, I've made a terrible mistake. Why did I ever agree to teach? I'm not a trained teacher. What was I possibly thinking? And I don't remember what happened in that 80 minutes. I just remember leaving the classroom and thinking this was the best 80 minutes of my entire life. And I absolutely and getting to spend those three years teaching just has had such a huge impact on me and what I've wanted to do with my life. And it was, I learned so much more than I taught. Um, as cliche as it is to say, I really did. I learned so much more than I, um, than I taught. And so I enjoy getting to spend time with college students like you, um, sharing about the opportunity to maybe go in Tanzania. Amazing um, so I want to share with you guys a short video about, about that. And how I think um, can you guys Brandon, I might need your help with this. Um, we just saw a video um, for Did a second. Did you hear the audio? Um, I didn't hear any audio. I'm not sure about anybody else. It was on pause. Like there was a video up, but it was just on pause. Like you didn't hit play. Okay. And then I think I need to say share computer. Can you guys see video? Yes. Okay. Can you hear audio? Yes. Okay.
Okay. I think that worked. I'm venturing into unknown sticky waters at the moment. So, um, yeah, I, I want to I want to pass the baton on to Reagan to share a little bit about her experience as a missionary teacher. As I said before, she did it for five years and she is awesome and yes, so take it away, Reagan. Okay. Sorry, my salad's spilling all over my bed here. Um, okay, yeah, so like you said, my name's Reagan. I was there for five years serving with Village Schools International. I taught in a village in Tanzania for three years and then in Zambia for about two years. Um, I <laughs> loved my time there so much. Um, it is it is easy to care about it and it's easy um, to love it and to want to talk about it. So at the end, it kind of the video kind of said like, hey, you need to be willing to live in a village and live on what a, a Tanzanian or Zambian teacher is making at the time. And so um, I lived in the village. That was one of the first things that really attracted me when I was learning about it was that you get to live with Tanzanians, with Zambians. You get to be in their home. Um, that was something different than from what I'd seen in other places. And then looking back, I don't think I realized how much that meant to them at the time that I was willing to come and share a room, share food and learn to eat their food and learn to enjoy it and learn to bathe out of a bucket and fetch water out of a well, wash my clothes in a bucket, watch my bedspread in a bucket. <laughs> um, but you learn to do it. And, um, Every time I would come back to the States and tell people like what I was doing, uh, they'd be like, wow, what a great experience. And uh, I, I'll assure you, I was not going for the experience. I would consider myself a person that doesn't need a lot in life to be satisfied, but there's a lot that I wish I didn't experience in regards to like the physical things of life i mean I always took a cold bucket bath um, it was just cold weather where we were so it didn't matter if your water was hot i was cold always and so um, i wish i didn't experience that and so for people that want a good experience like this isn't for you um, the experience and adventure will fade very fast. You have to believe in the mission, believe in what we're doing, um, believe that education is for the poor. That needs to be your sole um, reason for wanting to come and wanting to get involved. Um, during, during my time in Tanzania, um, I kind of saw that there was, it's a predominantly Christian nation, um, but I would say it's kind of Christian like the South, Josh, you can jump in and you know from your experience, but it's like everyone says they're a Christian, um, but not everyone fully understands what they believe and what that entails. And so um, I started doing, just walking people through the story of the Bible. I like got a little Bible reading program with some of the older girls in school. And so they would come in every morning after finishing sweeping the class and they would read one chapter of the Bible with me and slowly they would, they would read it individually. And then on Fridays we would talk about it together. Um, and then village schools have their own like Bible knowledge program that they're putting on. Um, but it was just really fun to watch people learn more about the Bible and to be able to connect it all the way through. And then when I moved to Zambia, um, Zambia was kind of getting started. And so I moved over there to kind of assist with some computer stuff. Their English was overall better. And so we got to not just do Bible knowledge, but more like Bible application and dig deeper. And um, I had a class over there of 15 boys. 
or maybe 17 boys and there's one girl and um you shouldn't have favorites but they were my favorite class because they were just so fun they were so willing to learn we taught um like a religious education course in literature which gave us opportunities to talk about life in the bible and how to apply the bible to your life to modern day issues so it's something i really enjoyed josh had said it earlier i was taught more than I taught then, and I would second that for sure. Um, someone had said it in a session yesterday about being a learner. I think as much as I wanted to say, I was going in being a learner. I still had pride thinking that I knew best coming from like a well-educated country. And um, when I got there, I was just immediately humbled on how little I knew um, that I didn't always have the right answers. and there was a lot I needed to learn. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, Lauren, I wanna be mindful of your time given that I think we're going over, but if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask. Um, and then if you're watching this recorded, uh, uh, you can email me. Um, yeah. um, so like I've always kind of, like throughout high school, I never really got the chance to like explore anything mission wise. So I kind of like made like a vow that I was going to do so much. Like I was going to try and do as much mission work as I could just because like helping people is like one of the like centers of my life. So like I'm a, I'm a biology major on the pre-med track. And so like I want to be able to go to med school and then do traveling medicine for mission work. So that's kind of like, mission's kind of what I want to revolve my career around. So I guess like, one of my questions would be like, um, what are the basic programs that like you would teach at the school? So is it just like math, science, reading? Like, what would you, like, what are your options? Yeah, great question. So we follow the government curriculum. So, you know, you touch on math, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, history, Kiswahili in Tanzania, I think it's Luanda in Zambia, um, physics, geography, and then Bible knowledge. Um, yeah, so those are, those are kind of what we do programmatically. Mm -hmm. I will say the like, yes, you're spending, you know, Ray, Reagan talk, talked about a little bit. You're spending that time in the classroom and it's a lot of fun. Um, that's a bridge for spending time with people outside of the classroom. And, you know, Reagan shared about how she did her, you know, uh, Bible reading thing in the morning. Um, I played soccer. Uh, I, I played volleyball. Um, I did, I did math tutoring in the evenings and um, all about, it's, it's not an eight to three type thing. It's a, it's a it's an all day let's build relationships with students and get to know them and um yeah it's it's i, I think the video puts it so well it's the hardest job you'll ever love um, um what is like the typical year people would start volunteering because like i'm gonna be honest i'm only a freshman i'm technically gonna be a junior because i'm almost I'm graduating ahead. So is it recommended to like, um, to at least finish your graduate degree or undergraduate and then go from there? What is the norm? Yeah, so we have, we have people who come out for the summer, college students, because that can work well with your schedule. Um, and actually we have a couple, we have a couple of teachers who come out during the summer. Obviously they didn't come this year because of COVID and you know, travel retreat and everything like that. So there are people who just come for the summer. It works really well with the Malawian school curriculum and just how things line up with that. Um, so if you wanted to come for a summer, you know, I, I'd be more than happy to talk with you a little mm -hmm. bit, whether that's summer 2021 or 2022. Um, as far as when you graduate, and if you wanna come for, so, so we can have people come for four months. So one semester, some people come for a year, like Reagan and a real glutton for punishment, you can come for a year. Um, 
years. Um, <laughs> so yeah, usually we have people come in January or in September, and that's August, September, that's when the, the school calendars. I think I answered your question, right? You did. Yeah, and then also um, go, going along with that, we, we do have a number of people who are working here in the U.S. who are helping sort of education stuff. And this may not pertain to you, Lauren, but there's you know somebody's watching this later on, um, and you're interested in sort of a quasi internship type thing. Um, that's something as well that we can definitely explore and you know, get to play a part. In some really cool supporting digital education and improving academics and stuff like that. So yeah. Any other questions? All right. Um, it, yeah, Lauren, if you wanna, if you wanna talk more, you, I think I will, might get your email or you might get my email. Um, we can definitely talk more. And if, it, since you're specifically interested in medical stuff, I'm more than happy to connect you with some different people who are doing medical work in different parts of the world. Um, yeah, something we awesome. specific. Yeah, that's not something we specifically do. But if I can, I, I've had lots of people who are you know, because I speak at lots of different colleges and I know lots of people who are in biology, pre-med track, who are interested in doing medical missions. So if I can point you in the right direction, that might open a door for you. Um, uh, that would make me very happy. So, happy to be a reference.